Okay, it's pick and roll, Coach Spotlight uh, once again, and with us, uh, the long tenured, or uh, I don't know, actually, Brooks uh, Catholic has only been around for a few years, but uh, Bob Birmingham, over 600 wins in his career, and uh, just a fixture in Brooks County girls basketball. I'm joined by my play-by-play guy, uh, James Hyde. Bob, thanks for being with us, taking some time on a Sunday night. Oh, sure. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Well, great. Listen, uh, I was talking a little bit about, um, you know, the, 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 the great picture you have coming on here. You're always one of the best dressed, uh, coaches out there. Do, does anybody comment on, you know, besides me on how well dressed you are? I do. Well, you know, a lot of times people do. I, I think, uh, before COVID more people dressed, a little bit better. I think the, the COVID couple of years, people started wearing polos or quarter zips and, and things like that. And that's just not me. I mean, I, I've been, as you said, I'm coaching 33 years. It was 22 at Holy Name High School. Now the past 11 at Berks Catholic. Uh, and it's, it's, I've always been that way. In my younger years, I even wore suspenders. Wow. So yeah, that's going back a while. <laughs> I think that that's so classic. I think that that's what's missing in the game. I mean, that's why I, I focus on it a lot because, you know, I'm old school and, and that's what basketball coaches did, you know, growing up. And obviously you're still maintaining that. And, uh, you know, over 600 wins. Do you have any idea how many of these interviews you've done over the years? <laughs> oh God, no. Uh, probably more lately. I mean, because there's so many individuals like yourselves that are going out, uh, branching out on their own and, and doing some things, which I think is great. Uh, I made the comment the other day, years ago, I, I make one phone call to the Reading Eagle and that was it. And then we were done. Well, now we're sending our box scores to four or five different places. We're getting interviewed. The kids are getting interviewed by three or four different people sometimes after games. And I think it's great for the high school game. I mean, the more that we can get out there, especially the media piece and the social media and the video because that's what our kids see. That's what they live for. And, and they share it all over the place. So I, I think it's great. Good. James, you got a question? Yeah, coach, I got a question about, about your team here and, and your coaching style and, and how you approach things. But uh, obviously a very experienced team that you have. They've had a lot of success together in, in the past few years. Uh, it's evident this season, again, the, the chemistry that this team has with your, your record and 9-0 and league record. Uh, just tell us a little bit about what you personally have enjoyed about this the, this current journey with this group of players. You know, the, the biggest thing is how well they get along both on and off the court. Um, I mean, we have a great nucleus of seniors and we have a lot of younger kids in the program also that are getting some serious time right now. We have three freshmen that are coming off the bench and playing in every game. And I, I said before, the older kids don't treat them like freshmen. They're another teammate. They come out, they're expected to do their job. When they make a mistake, they don't get on them at all. They just uh, sort of guide them on how to do some things. Um, it was great. We, we go down to Florida every other year. And this was one of our years that we went down. And it was neat to see the kids and how well they bonded down there, uh, just with everything, with the games, with, with going to the parks, with going to Disney and Universal and on the rides. And, and it, it's just nice to see how well they get along and how much they like each other. Wow, that's fantastic. And you've had a very good run uh, in league play. I believe you're undefeated, 9-0. Uh, and 0. You just beat Governor Mifflin in a kind of a squeaker on Thursday. But your only two losses are really to your kind of your nemesis this year, you know, in the district, uh, DeLone Catholic. You know, what's it going to take? I, I guess there's two things I observe. Number one, uh, I think it's it's really critical, at least, that you kind of maintain that number two seed just so that if the next time you play them is on a neutral floor rather than, you know, at, at their place. But second, what are some of the things that your team's going to have to do better to kind of get over the top against the lone Catholic? You know, if they do a great job of pressure and, and, and they run and jump, uh, this group of girls at Delon's been playing together since they were freshmen. They want to stay championship as freshmen. Right. And Gary does such a great job down there. Uh, and what we need to do is break their pressure 
and sort of take our time and get some good shots and finish a little bit. We, when we watched the film of the game the other week, it, we handled their pressure okay, but then we rushed things too much. And that's what they want you to do. That, that's mm-hmm. the way they, they pressure all over the place. They push a depth ball down the floor. Then they have two or three great scorers uh, that can break you down a little bit. Um, I, I think defensively, we play pretty well against them. It, it's more in the offensive end where we have to try to dictate uh, the speed and, and, and the tempo a little bit. But it's, it's, it's great playing against them. I mean, we, we have two losses in Pennsylvania, both of them, and then we lost to the team out of Arkansas. Right. Uh, point guard is, is going to Vanderbilt. Uh, and she, she had 29 against us. She was something special when we played there. Uh, but yeah, it's, we played Delon in a tip-off tournament and we scheduled them non-league uh, because as you say, that's the sort of our, our gauge as where we're at. Uh, they're one of the best teams in the district and one of the best teams in the state in 4A. And if you want to compete at the high level in the state, you, you got to play teams like that as you move forward. Yeah. To, to be the best, you have to beat the best, you know, I mean, the old adage is that, uh, that's pretty much the same. James, you have another question for Coach? Yeah, Coach. Um, you have a bunch of standout players on your squad as well. Um, you, you have uh, Caroline Reedy, who can score from anywhere on the floor. Uh, Caroline Herb, your sharpshooter outside. I think she has about 34 threes this year, which which leads the team. Um, tell us a little bit about how the talent, the experience all together enables you to create a game plan each week against this different variety of teams. You had some big victories this year, some close victories, and then battles with DeLone Catholic. Uh, tell us how, how the flexibility on the offensive end of the floor enables you to create a game plan for each week and also maybe just some in-game adjustments, how easy it becomes for you as a coach. Yeah, it's, it, it's nice to, to be able to move kids around a little bit. Uh, you, you looked at Caroline Reedy. I mean, Caroline Reedy's our leading scorer. She's our leading rebounder. Uh, she works really, really hard, and she worked really, really hard in her game. Up until this year, she never made a three-point field goal in a game. This year, she's got 15. So she's <laughs> at, at it for her repertoire, and, and it's, it's great. The other night when we played Reading, we, we had her outside for the first half, and we thought that she'd be able to attack a little bit better off the dribble from the high post. We put her in the high post, and I think she ended up with 10 in the second half, 18 overall. So it's nice to have that flexibility. As, as you say, Caroline Herb is, is just something special as a shooter, uh, but she's become more of a complete player now, takes the ball to the basket real well, handles the ball real well. Uh, is probably one of our best defenders, if not our best defender. Um, and, and we have some other pieces, another senior in Aaliyah Dabney, who's really come a long way for us this year. Strong physical athlete, uh, takes basically the best player on the other team, and she's big enough and quick enough that she can – guard guards, guard post players. So that's great for us. Um, Mackenzie Gordos has been our starting point guard now for two years, and she's really coming into her own. We're knowing that she's just got to control the game, get the ball to our scores. Every once in a while, the other night against Smith, I think she knocked down two threes when we needed it. And they seem to play real well together. We have another junior that starts, Sydney Brown, uh, and Sydney's doing a nice job for us as well, just knowing what she can do and, 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 helping finding the open people. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest things for us. We, we share the ball very, very well. The other night, I don't know what game it was. We had, we had 20 field goals. It might've been the Reading game, 20 field goals and we had 18 assists. I mean, you did, it doesn't get any better than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then we're bringing three freshmen off the bench right now. Um, uh, Madison Langdon, who's, who's going to be a really, really nice point guard for us. Uh, Sydney Corrado, who's, who's a, I would call like a stretch three, or for about 5'10", 5'11", can shoot it, can take it inside. And then Molly McFadden's given us some good minutes off the bench as well. So those three kids are going to step in and be ready to play these, these next three years because we're graduating three, three starters. Uh, but as you said, it, the, the ability to be able to move the pieces around because they can do so many different things uh, has been great for us. And the nice thing is, from my standpoint, I really don't have to say much about it. They know what they need to do, and they go out and do it. Uh, I think our biggest thing is the way we communicate on defensive end. I mean, I think we're only giving up 32 or 33 points a game, and, and that's given up 50 and 60 to DeLone. Uh, so I'm real happy with the way we're working on the defensive end and, and some of the things we do. The other night we held uh, Twin Valley, who's a really nice team, to 22 points. Uh, so it's, it, it's a special group, as I said, and, and the, the way they 
work together and just the fact that how much they get along, that also now goes onto the floor and you can see it there as well, that they're having fun when they're playing. So and that's, that's the most important part. I mean, it's yeah. nice to win. It's got, the kids got to have fun. When you're 16, 17, 18 years old, you're not out there just to, to, to be too serious about it. You got to be having fun or, or it makes it very, very difficult. How does your coaching, uh, oh, uh, I shouldn't say how, does your cho- coaching philosophy or the way that you manage games change from uh, regular season to as we go into the postseason? Uh, I don't know if my philosophy changes at all. Sometimes you your minutes maybe for some of your subs get a little less. Uh, during the season, you may try some things. Like we tried to, to trap a couple times, a couple games this year, and we're very successful with it until you get against real good teams that can pass. Then, then we're back. In, but, but when it comes down to it, like for us, we want to control the tempo. We want to move the ball in the offensive end. And defensively, we want to sort of just lock people down and, and make sure people are taking difficult shots and that they're not getting second, second opportunities. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a big thing. I mean, we, we count that and we chart that a lot, how many times people score off a second or third opportunity. And it's, when, when that gets high, I'm not too happy. You know, I, sometimes I find coaches that, I don't know, for, for whatever reason, um, they try and do something different in the playoffs to break tendencies to somehow surprise their opponent. And quite honestly, sometimes that backfires. So it's kind of refreshing to hear that you're, you're pretty much take the philosophy that you're going to do what brought you to the party, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and there's a reason you're playing in a playoffs and you're getting to where you get to. And it's the little things that you do. The, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that play a lot of junk defenses and that's just has not been me for the third years that I'm coaching. Uh, I just think if you can play some really good solid man to man, every once in a while, you may have to throw in a zone, but I don't think you can play zone if you don't know how to play man. I mean, cause it tended, I think it's tougher to play a zone. Mm. Um, but again, that's, again, that's me. Um, and we, ah, geez, I don't think we've played a regular zone since Devin Merrick graduated for it. We played a matchup when, when we had her in the middle, but when you have six, one, uh, division one player in, in the post for you, you could do some different things, uh, yeah. but that's, that's, that's six, seven years ago now. So that's, that's yeah. the last time we played his own. So. Well, I tell you what, uh, we really appreciate you taking some time on a Sunday night here. Um, and uh, at least, you know, like you were saying, I was expecting you to come in a tie, and <laughs> but at least, you know, you got your Saints, Saints basketball gear on there, right? I told, you, I told you, Bruce, I almost did. I almost changed into it just, a, but I thought now nah, it'd be a little, a uh, little more relaxed since it's a Sunday night and we didn't practice tonight because we're off tomorrow. So we had, we actually, the kids had Saturday and Sunday off, which doesn't happen too often. Wow. So we try to get playoffs. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Bob, listen, thanks a lot. Really appreciate um, your time here tonight. I know that James and I, I'm sure we'll be picking up one of your games here in the postseason for streaming and what have you. So uh, best of luck. And, uh, you know, what what a, a great day to be a saint, right? Every day is a great day to be a saint, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but Bob, I, thanks I, so much. Both of you. Thanks, James. Thanks, Chris. Thanks have Coach. A, have a great night. All right. Take care, Good luck the rest of the way. We'll see you around now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.